giving me the opportunity to talk to you today about uh, clouds. Um, I really want to focus though on something which I think is a very good continuation of the talk before, which was very much focusing on applications and, and basically the user side of HPC. Um, and I want to really continue on that and, and will try to show you how actually clouds or the concept of clouds can help HPC to be uh, more usable to more users. Um, so what I want to talk about today um, is mainly I want to give a little bit an overview of um, cloud computing for HPC. It's, it's basically a little bit our view on it, um, but uh, I hope you uh, can still see some of the principles behind that then. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about uh, what the company that I'm coming from, uh, which is Cloud Broker, located in Zurich. We are, uh, have been a spin-off of the ETH, actually, um, is doing in that area. And at the end, I want to give you a little bit uh, um, a case of, an, of a project where these things are used together. So starting with cloud computing. Um, I assume all of you know what cloud computing is. I nevertheless put this slide on, uh, which I think is now the most well accepted definition of cloud computing. I mainly do this because usually what I hear when HPC and cloud is, is mentioned, the, the focus is, is basically on Let's say it shortly, it's like OpenStack for the private solution or Amazon uh, for, for the public solution. Um, and I think, they, I mean, they all uh, cover the, the usual principles of cloud, which is on-demand self-service. It's usually accessible through the internet. Um, uh, you have uh, multiple clients uh, sharing the resources. It can scale up and down easily and, and, and very fast. And usually you have it uh, accessible um, in a measured way, usually pay-per-use when you talk about public cloud. Um, but I want, to, I want to really point out is that in cloud computing, we not only talk about infrastructure as a service, which is mostly what is talked about in, uh, in the area of, of HPC, but we also have these higher la uh, layers, software as a service and platform as a service, which are as important also both for HPC as for clouds. Because basically the, the normal users, they come in from the top and not from the bottom. So when I look now, or when we look now at um, the pros and cons of cloud computing, I can do several slides about this, but I, I don't want to uh, go too much into detail. Of course, yes, you get a lot of more flexibility than you had before. Um, and basically, it's a type of outsourcing, um, at least when you use public clouds, with all the good sides and bad sides of it. Um, but what I really want to point out, and this is another aspect which is usually not so much mentioned, uh, together with cloud computing, I mean, all the technology has been there before. Virtualization has been there before. A lot of other things have been there before. But what is really important, it's kind of a new business model. So it does not only have technical aspects, it also has business aspects, which are very, very new um, uh, with cloud computing. Um, and I think we have to keep these two things together um, to, to uh, really use all of the opportunities uh, that are behind that. So when I now more focus on, on the actual HPC sector, um, what do we have there? We have different parties that play a role. This is a very like, uh, summary slide, which only focuses on, on, on three parties that are uh, in, uh, involved as stakeholders. Of course, you have the end users. And we have to be very careful there. The end users really they basically just want to focus on their applications. I'm a chemist by training. I really hated to learn everything about HPC. I had to because I needed to do quantum chemistry calculations. Um, but I didn't want to. I want to focus on my calc uh, calculations, not on the infrastructure. Uh, and now the people that are coming now from the universities, you know, those are the Facebook people. You know, they are used to using something very quickly and easily, and it is clickable through the web, and they can download it from the App Store and whatever. And now they are confronted with uh, all the things that has been discussed here in, in very much detail, which, which sounds a little strange to them. So they, they really want to use things easily, accessibly, and focus on the things that they want to do. Of course, the software vendors on the other side want to promote their things. That's clear. I don't want to go into detail there. We also have the computer centers, and they can be both commercial as well as, uh, as uh, uh, government ones. Um, and they basically have two parties they want to make happy. On one side, these are the users. And on the other side, they also have the budget providers, may be their uh, company uh, department or uh, may it be the government they need to make happy. And of course, for that, 
they want to, on one side, make optimal use of their resources. That's clear. We have a lot heard about performance uh, optimization. Um, but on the other hand, they also want to make things easily accessible. And there's some pressure now, at least in some centers, to also make it available more to the commercial side and more in a pay-per-use fashion. Uh, so I think this becomes more and more important over time. Okay. Coming or zooming more into detail on, on HPC and cloud, um, I usually show this picture because there you see the different uh, layers that uh, can actually all work together uh, in HPC and cloud picture. At the bottom, we have the classical HPC, then we have infrastructure as a service, which is the usual, like Amazon EC2 model, um, platform as a service, software as a service, and we even have more on top of that, which is called gateways, and I will show a little bit uh, more about that in detail. So what are the typical solutions? And I really, uh, you know, I cannot go into every single example. I just want to have a more kind of general um, view on this. One typical solution is exemplified by basically the most of the generic uh, public cloud services um, that offer you usually virtual resources um, that you can choose from, that you can quickly get within even seconds sometimes, um, that you uh, can pay for usually just a few cents for the smallest machines. Um, and um, there you have a lot of, of choice um, to, uh, to, to use. Um, and it's very well suited for certain types of calculations. So it's very well suited for everything which is uh, embarrassingly or uh, parallel or, or loosely coupled. You can do very big calculations there. It gets more difficult and you need more specialized resources when you have anything that is tightly coupled. Um, and they are probably classical HPC resources become much more um, usable or, or uh, interesting. There are also a few other things when you just focus on uh, the infrastructure as a service layer. Basically, you have to assemble everything yourself. You have to install the software yourself. You have to um, set up a cluster yourself. There are tools for that, but you have to know those tools and you have to work with them. Um, so this is something that, uh, that is on your own when you are a user. Then we have kind of the other side, um, which is HPC on, which I would call HPC on demand. This is when you have a classical HPC supercomputer center, can be a commercial or a, a, a government offering, um, where you provide access to, uh, for example, to the outside and you pay for, for each computing hour. Uh, and there, of course, you have the advantage, uh, it is classical HPC uh, infrastructure, so you can really nicely uh, use it for all the purposes we have discussed before, but you have now combine it with the business model of the cloud, without virtualization necessarily, when you don't need it. Um, so, for users that are uh, familiar with HPC, this is great, they can just continue uh, using it as before. Um, but of course, for everybody not familiar with that model, it's, it's kind of a step to learn. We all know this. Um, and of course, you know, you need to have the software available and, and so on. Now we have this kind of more like the bottom uh, layer of this uh, stack. I want to also mention the upper layers. And there one can differentiate between basically two models, how cloud and HPC are combined. One is, uh, in part at least, driven by the application providers. Um, and these are individual application portals. So there are commercial ones, but there are also so uh, scientific uh, gateways that are for particular applications or for particular um, uh, number of applications, um, providing a, a nice, usually web-based, uh, user interface where you can nicely work with. Um, and somewhere behind there, there are HPC resources. Um, so this is, of course, great uh, for users. It's an easy entry. Um, but of course, when you have individual applications or uh, just a small number of strongly uh, connected applications, um, and they are all implemented a little different, um, it's very hard to switch and it's very hard to compare. Um, like, where is this running? How expensive is it? If it is offered as uh, pay-per-use at all, often the, these things are offered by software vendors, uh, for example, combined with their usual license model, uh, which then doesn't help you much further. Um, so there are some things positive and negative about that. And finally, 
And now we come into the world where we, we all know, we all know from our cell phones, there are application stores, depending on which uh, operating system you use, it's, it's based on Google or on Apple or on Microsoft. Um, and basically you could do now the same also with HPC software and HPC infrastructure underneath. So basically, um, there is now, and I will talk about that in detail, um, the possibility to basically offer a set of applications that can, can come from very different areas um, via a web interface, uh, easily executable by the user, without needing to know about all the nitty gritty details of HPC that users like chemists don't really want to know about. Um, of course, this is different um, than the usual classical HPC usage, um, and of course this, uh, is sometimes uh, not so easy for users that are used to that, but I think for the new like Facebook uh, um, community of users that is, is arriving now, this is really what they think this should look like. Okay, so this is the first part which gives more like a general overview. What I want to now talk about is basically how we as a company cloud broker try to, um, what we try to offer in this, in this sphere. Uh, and I mainly want to introduce you into two uh, products that we offer. One is more kind of a middleware for these uh, purposes, um, that is the Cloud Broker platform. And then we also offer a, basically a software that allows you to, to build a web-based shop for um, using, actually executing um, uh, application software as a service. So, as you see here, what we do not do is we don't, don't uh, repeat infrastructure as a service or HPC on demand. We basically use it, so we sit on top of it. Um, and we also all not try to do all the details that an individual application uh, can do. This is what we usually leave to the um, application providers to do in detail. Um, but what we do is basically bridge the, the gap in the middle. So we will offer the opportunity um, to combine applications and um, infrastructure and to offer it as a service through the internet as a web service and to offer, to offer it in a, in a one-stop shop. First, I want to talk about the Cloud Broker platform, which is kind of the, the middleware part of it. Um, so what it basically allows is it allows you to manage everything that is, is, is there as a... Um, um, entity like the users, the software, the infrastructure, the individual jobs. It also allows you, and this is the cloud model uh, in it, apart from being accessible through the internet, you, you can uh, set prices, you can have paper use, you can do billing, um, and as much as possible everything is automated and sits on top of various different types of infrastructure. And on the top it is um, uh, a solution that cannot only be used through a web interface, but it can also be used through um, uh, a number of uh, APIs, um, which I will also show in, in detail later. Um, and it can be used both as a public version as well as also as a private version. So when you look um, at the kind of architecture, you see here we, we offer various different um, accesses to infrastructure. We call these adapters. I will talk about that later. On this, you can deploy infrastructure. Uh, on this infrastructure, you can deploy applications, and then there are these various interfaces that you can use. And now we also see a growing number of uh, external tools that uh, use these interfaces, uh, including also the App Center that I will talk about later. So this is how it looks like. You see, uh, it still looks a little bit like uh, more like middleware like. Uh, however, this still allows a lot of uh, users to, to easily, you know, run a, a job on, on various different kinds of infrastructure and see, you know, how much would this cost me. And they can see before they submit how much at least the first hour will cost. Um, so that is uh, something very nice. It's also the same information is also accessible through the API. Um, kind of in the back, uh, what happens is uh, when we ha you have the platform here, it, it either assumes uh, so, uh, the infrastructure it takes over the infrastructure that is given by the HPC resource. However, we actually come from the cloud area, uh, area, so basically what it does, it will build a cluster on the fly. It will boot up the cluster when you need it, and when you don't need it anymore, it will shut it down, you will not even realize, because what you do as a user, you just submit jobs. So it will fully automate this. It will also automate deployment um, and, and data transfer. 
We have implemented a number of different um, adapters, and this is growing. You see, we come from the um, public cloud area, then there are some uh, private cloud infrastructures that we can uh, talk to, and we are now uh, basically extending this to the, uh, to the HPC uh, on demand field. Same as uh, for storages, you can also implement different types of storage, which are needed for the long term storage of, of data that you want to download from the portal. Application software, we're uh, really focusing on compute intensive um, application software, um, which can be parallel or non parallel. It can be uh, like doing parameter sweeps or, or, or things like this by, by using the API. Um, so we are. Um, basically supporting both classical uh, HPC uh, uh, software as well as uh, high throughput uh, focused software. And we also even uh, offer some support for non-HPC software, though, although this is not our focus. We support both Linux and Windows. Uh, and our main application areas in, are in biology, pharma and chemistry, as well as in engineering and manufacturing. Um, and you see a number of, of application names here that I can give you. Um, just as examples. Here are the different um, APIs. We have on the bottom a uh, web service uh, REST interface, which basically allows you to do all commands that you can click through on the web interface. You can more or less also do through that interface. On top of that, there's a Java API that does about the same. We have for job submission also a command line interface. And then there are now uh, some tools that, that interface to it, which are not ours, but are built by ex ex uh, external people. In particular, there's a workflow tool, WSP Great GUs, that is um, interfacing to the Cloud Broker platform. I won't be able to go into detail on all the uh, uh, use cases, but just a few examples which f uh, highlight different points. Um, the first one is, uh, a or was a collaboration with uh, ETH Zurich and, and IBM, running on IBM cloud resources, and this basically showed that you can do um, um, embarrassingly parallel calculations on, of huge amounts uh, on the cloud. Uh, here for the example of, of uh, modeling uh, the 3D structures of proteins. Um, then another experiment uh, was with computational fluid dynamics software, Elmer, uh, which was running on Amazon cloud resources that showed a little bit uh, what I've sh shown before, that you know Amazon is only suited up to a certain world for, for a tightly coupled uh, parallel code like, like uh, CFD um, uh, software. And then there is, uh, of course, also the possibility to, to use uh, the Cloud Broker platform uh, through its API uh, but to build uh, scientific gateways for various uh, kinds of software, which was highlighted in the, in the Cybus project. Okay, going uh, back to the stack um, and going up higher um, to the App Center. Um, you're still seeing that the, from the user interface, the Cloud Broker platform still looks like a little bit middle wary. Um, but what we really want to achieve is, is uh, having, a, a, yeah, like an application store for HPC software. Or not only software, but the actual calculations, so you can run calculations. You don't need to install anything, you can just run it through the web. Um, and that is what we want to achieve with the, with the App Center, which is pretty uh, new software. Um, still, basically, this provides a, a, web, a web marketplace where software vendors can uh, offer their, offer their uh, applications pre-installed or downloadable, however they want it, um, through the Cloud Broker platform as a service behind or, or in other ways. Um, and users can then buy and run um, the software as, a, as they like. And behind that, you have all the administration, for example, for all the billing uh, capabilities of that. It is actually from when you look at the architecture picture, looks a little bit similar, um, but it sits on top of the Cloud Broker platform, but you also have other services, so you can also use other web services, classical download of the software. Um, and again, you have uh, APIs that you can then use, for example, when you will want to build your very own portal of your very own uh, software on top of it. Here you see how it, how it looks like uh, for a demo case. Um, and uh, you see this, this really looks a lot like how you want an, an app center to look like. Okay, so um, I'm not sure how I'm in the time. Okay, then I want to use the um, last part um, of the talk to, to talk about a particular project. Um, which kind of exemplifies this, this overall setup of, of different uh, tools um, to basically bring HPC applications to users. 
Um, and this is the cloud SME uh, project, which is an EU FP7 project, uh, which ru runs since 2013 until end of this year. Um, the, the acronym stands for Cloud-Based Simulation Platform for Manufacturing and Engineering. Basically, the goal of this project is to provide a one-stop shop for, in particular, small and medium enterprises in the um, manufacturing and engineering um, sector um, that usually don't have the capabilities to do uh, HPC in-house um, and that also often don't have the knowledge uh, to be able to use any HPC anywhere, um, but that are, are really want to use applications and really need applications. And think of small, uh, for example, consulting companies that, that um, could do really big projects this way, um, but that they don't usually have uh, neither the computer resources nor the detailed knowledge of, of working with a, um, a big supercomputer uh, cluster, for example. Um, and this way, of course, the EU has the idea to, to kind of foster the development of, of small and medium uh, enterprises in the manufacturing engineering sector in, in Europe, in particular, basically, to go uh, and support uh, these areas so that they can use more modeling, more simulation um, to enhance the um, uh, economic uh, use um, of, of the projects, for example, to, to optimize how uh, a certain assembly line is working uh, or to... Uh, uh, substitute actual experiments by uh, doing simulations before to, to limit uh, the amount of money that needs to be spent on this. And you see from the um, partners that are in there, one partner is Cloud Broker, um, is uh, that uh, it's, it's a pretty large project, almost 30 partners, and most of them are actually SMEs. And there are very few academic partners. Uh, so this is uh, quite, quite an interesting um, application area for, uh, for HPC. Um, what I also really like about this project is that it kind of includes the whole stack. So it includes everything or partners from every level, including uh, infrastructure resources uh, like various private clouds and op uh, a public cloud provider, Cloud Sigma, um, as well as some external resources uh, from Amazon and, and the Supercomputing Center in Stuttgart. Um, and um, they're not partners, but, but uh, uh, can be used in the project. Then we have the providers of the technology, where Cloud Broker is, is one of the main providers uh, of these, these tools, and the other one is the um, uh, workflow uh, tool that I mentioned before. Um, we have some generic uh, support capabilities, which are, you see, mainly uh, offered by uh, the academic partners, as well as even a um, professional marketing company. Um, and what is really the core of this is uh, the so-called uh, experiments. So these are collaborations of uh, individual software providers and end users to actually go and try using the system. Um, and there were initially four, and now this year there's uh, seven additional ones which were uh, um, gotten from an open call. Um, which are which I will go into detail later. Um, when you look at the architecture of the Cloud SME project, you will recognize the, the kind of uh, building blocks that I've shown you before. Uh, we have here the, the various um, uh, infrastructure uh, infrastructures that can be used. Then here's the Cloud Broker platform through which the applications will be provided. Um, uh, then there is uh, the, the workflow tool, which can actually use this uh, infrastructure, but it has also the capability to use external um, infrastructures. And then on top, we have really the one-stop shop, which is realized through the App Center. And this way, uh, now basically um, sitting very high above the, the physical infrastructure, uh, we can now expose the still partly complex uh, applications um, to the actual uh, manufacturing and engineering SMEs. Uh, here is a slide that uh, summarizes the, the different application experiments that are uh, currently running. Um, the initial four ones uh, are, are given in, in black and the ones that have just started uh, are given in gray. Um, so uh, you see here they are from very different fields. There are some fluid dynamics uh, calculations, um, but there is also, uh, for example, um, uh, logistics. There is uh, even beer brewing. Um, we have a very in interesting application, which is the design of or optimal design of insoles for shoes, uh, which sounds 
crazy, but it's, it's really interesting. Um, we also have uh, aircraft maintenance, which is more uh, um, uh, manufacturing uh, and engineering case. Um, then uh, s some uh, uh, new uh, processes that are upcoming are emission res reduction, business process optimization, which is, again, similar to, uh, to some of the discrete event simulation that is in one of the first experiments, um, and inventory analysis and forecasting, which goes more into the big data um, area. Uh, you see that uh, these are like marked a little different. Uh, the actual, what I would call classical HPC cases, are given in bold. These are the three here. Um, then we have some which I would more call um, uh, high throughput. These are given in, in italics. And then there are two which I would say are more big data. Um, and these are the two, two on the bottom. What I really focus, want to focus on is the classical HPC case. And I will pick the one that is uh, given uh, from the very first beginning of, of this uh, project, uh, which is uh, the collaboration of OSCOM and uh, Eurobios. Um, ASCOM is actually, uh, actually a Swiss company. It's, it's uh, also located in Zurich, actually pretty close to our own office. Um, and what they provide is they have developed a tool, Transat, which is a computational fluid dynamics code with focus on um, mainly multi-fluid uh, solutions, for example, for the oil industry. Um, and Eurobias is a consulting company which then applies these codes to, to help, um, to help uh, users um, get their uh, certain processes modeled. Um, so change that is a typical CFD applications, and, and then you know them, you know they have typical uh, HPC requirements. In particular, they need usually very fast uh, uh, network interconnects. Um, it has been enabled in this project to, to work together and be uh, offered um, through the Cloud Broker Platform and App Center. And it also turned out to, to work reasonably well um, on uh, Amazon. Uh, resources. Um, so there is a certain um, reduction in, in performance, but it's still uh, okay. Um, nevertheless, uh, it is expected that uh, um, such calculations can very much gain uh, from, from real um, HPC resources. Um, so this was basically uh, the, one of the reasons why uh, we now uh, have, and this is very recent results, uh, have integrated the, uh, the first uh, supercomputer center uh, into the overall system, and this is the high performance computing center in Stuttgart, Germany, so not so far away in the southern part of Germany from here. Um, and this is uh, actually enabled to uh, um, kind of sister project of Cloud SME, which is called Fortissimo, which was uh, um, uh, well, is in the same uh, call uh, of the EU. Um, and uh, so what, we, what is now available is uh, a new adapter in the Cloud Broker Platform that you have seen before uh, to one of the clusters that, have, uh, that HLS uh, has enabled. And we are actually currently working on, on expanding this uh, further. Um, it has uh, certain um, features that you would usually expect um, from, uh, uh, from a system like this. For example, that you can select between different uh, types of nodes, but you can also select between uh, on, on, on the queuing system level. Um, what is also uh, basically given is you can set prices and thus use this pay per use. Um, and we have also kind of a um, uh, something to, to kind of play with the rules of the center to uh, uh, only permit uh, that each user has to have their own account. Um, so there is no kind of uh, pooling of accounts possible. Um, these are just some of the features, and uh, this is a screenshot of this. Basically, what you, what you can do here, you can register uh, resource, uh, which you can do in any installation of the Cloud Broker platform, uh, and now you can just select this one in addition. And as you said, you see we are currently working on, on having a few more. Um, and the nice thing about this is that now basically not only ASCOM, but all the other partners will have access to this in the same way as before. So basically, uh, it's the same interface they can use and they can collaborate with and they can just, instead of Amazon, select an HPC center. Um, and it will be 
as transparent to the users as the software vendors uh, want this, so they can in the end say, I just want my software to, to be seen and the uh, uh, calculations be silently done in the back, or, um, and this is uh, in, in part at least used um, for the example that I've shown, the users can actually select, I want to run this at this point on, on this uh, cloud provider, for example. Okay, so uh, I think I've now <laughs> used a lot of time in the end. And I want to come um, to the end. Uh, so I hope I could show you that um, it is very good that uh, we now have HPC resources uh, available in a cloud manner on the infrastructure level. So I, either IAS or uh, what I would call uh, HPC on demand. Um, but what is really like even make this available to much more users uh, and to very different users like small and medium uh, sized companies is when you have an, a layer on top that allows to do this software as a service and not only infrastructure as a service. Um, I hope our company can contribute to this a bit by offering two tools that uh, um, enable this for you. Uh, the Cloud Broker Platform, which is more the intermediate layer, and the App Center, which allows you to enable a, a one-stop shop for the applications available on your um, computer center. Um, and um, in the end, um, I think the Cloud SME project is a very interesting one in that it shows uh, how uh, such partly complex infrastructures can in the end be really exposed to, to actual users from the manufacturing and engineering sector that not necessarily, and not all partners have uh, actual um, uh, previous experience uh, with such uh, calculations. Um, and I hope the goal also of the EU with this project to extend the range that, uh, of, of, of uh, companies that can use these really great facilities that we now all have um, can really do this and help uh, with this. Um, so with this, um, I want to close my presentation. I want to thank a lot of people, but I could not fit them on one slide. I think I have to, I, <laughs> I have to thank one person in particular uh, who was working so very recently on, on, uh, on uh, getting the uh, um, HLRS uh, adapter working. That is Andre, perhaps he's watching um, at some point this video. So uh, thank you very much for your great work. Um, and uh, of course, all the teams that were behind the different projects. Um, and finally, I want to thank you for your attention, and I'm open to any questions you might have. <laughs>